Okay, this is a very short slideshow here as we get to the third declension, the third declension in Latin uh, of five. The first three are unique in that uh, not only are they used for nouns and adjectives, but they can also uh, produce adverbs. The fourth and fifth declensions produce no adverbs or adjectives. Uh, the third declension is this is really the the hardest one there are many parts to it um the, the quiz on the third declension is usually tougher than any of the other ones uh there are variations uh, there's something called the i stem which we'll get to in a separate slideshow but i just want to introduce the third and uh, also quickly review the first and second um so let's take a look here so you may recall, if you've seen the other slideshow, that the first declension uh, is the one that uh, begins with words that end in A. Uh, sometimes you'll see an AS ending if it's a Greek word, a Greek name rather, that was brought into Latin like Aeneas uh, or Ascanius. Um, and uh, there are several other ones. Um, so we see the endings here, and the song is not included in this slideshow, but we have a, I, I, am, a, I, arumisas, is. That was the first declension, uh, mostly feminine. Uh, there are a couple of masculine words in there. Uh, no neuters. Then we get to the second declension, and uh, now we can see that there are two um, columns that we have to remember. The one on the left is for feminine, I'm sorry, for masculine. There are very, very few feminine words in the second declension, and those are really for city names, or place, place names. So Corinthus, uh, which is how we would say Corinth, the Greek city of Corinth in Latin, uh, has an us ending. Um, it looks masculine, but it's actually feminine. Uh, and remember that Latin mimics Greek. In Greek, Korinthos has that ascending. It looks masculine, but it is actually feminine, second declension. So here we have usi oumo iorumisosis. On the right side, we have the neuter version. Umi oumo a orumis a is. And it's the nominative and the accusative uh, that tell us... Um, that where we can find the, the differences that the neuter brings. That's the first uh, the, and second declension right there. Now let's get to the third. And again, this is not going to be a complete uh, presentation of the third. We see uh, that we have all three genders here uh, very well represented. Um, and if you look carefully, if you pause this and take a look at the the first two columns here in the third, you'll see that um, the first two columns are basically the same, frater, frat, fratris, uh, brother of the brother, and soror, sororis, sister of the sister. Uh, one is masculine, one is feminine. Why would I put them both on here if the endings are the same? Why not do what we did with the second declension, just make one column for masculine and feminine and one for neuter? Um, there are reasons why we do it that uh, may become evident uh, very soon. The third declension, again, the, uh, the differences are found in the nominative and the accusative. So the first and fourth lines at the top and the first and fourth at the bottom. Um, aside from those, they, uh, the neuter is the same as the masculine and feminine. A thing to remember is that the nominative singular ending of the third declension is highly irregular. So uh, we need to look at the genitive. In fact, for any Latin noun, it's the genitive case that tells us what we're looking at. That, that's where that gender chromosome is, if you want to call it that. So when you see a word, a noun rather, or an adjective that ends in AE, it can only be first declension. If you see one that ends in an I uh, in the genitive singular, it can only be second. If you see a noun that ends in IS, 
um, in the genitive singular, it has to be third, uh, and it cannot be anything else when it's in that position with those letters. Uh, so we look to the genitive ending, and in fact, uh, if I'm not mistaken, all dictionaries, or at least all good ones, will present the nominative and genitive entries. They won't just give you the nominative, and if they do, uh, shame on them. Uh, you can write a letter to the publisher and uh, tell them that uh, they, they've taken your money and not given you value uh, for your product. Uh, so the second note that we have here on the right is that the third declension has many variations in the nominative singular, but the genitive singular ending is always is. The, the, and I've already talked about this, but I do want to mention that the the nominative singular ending, I, I think there are 34 or 35 uh, possible endings that are third declension uh, in the, in the uh, singular nominative. So it's really easy to get tripped up there. There are all kinds of weird endings. You'll see X's, uh, O's, the, these things that we're not accustomed to seeing. And um, let's take a look here. If I can get this to come up, there we go. So here are some common masculine endings. Uh, there are words, it, this is in the third declension, of course, words that end with or, and in the genitive singular, oris. So amor, amoris, we have nominative and genitive, and you can probably guess that amor means love. This is the noun of love. Amoris means of love, like in the name of love. Uh, or something like that. Then we have labor, laboris, again, or, oris. Uh, I'm sure you can guess what labor is. Arbor, arboris, and um, it's probably not too difficult to think uh, of an English uh, derivative of this. Uh, we also have a lot of words, masculine words in the third declension that have tor, torres, so victor, victoris, scriptor, scriptoris. Okay, and these are words that you can look up, and again, you should see these uh, both in the dictionary, side by side. Okay, so there are some masculine endings. Here are some feminine ones, and again, these are just the common ones. I've left a lot of the rare ones out. Um, Tas tatis, so veritas veritatis. Libertas libertatis. Okay. Uh, veritas is truth. It's where we get words like very and verify and verily and other uh, related words. So verit veritas is truth. Veritatis is of the truth. Tus tutis, virtus virtutis, senectus senectutis. Okay, another common pattern, um, tudo tudinis, multitudo multitudinis, pulcritudo pulcritudinis, and tio tionis, natio nationis, senectus. Oh, that's a mistake. Okay, you can just ignore that last one. Uh, so there are the feminine ones, and let's take a look at some of the neuters, and this is really where you're, you'll see the junk pile. Well, we start off with uh, a couple of normal ones, corpus corporis. Um, we get words like corpse from this. You may also know the city in Texas, corpus Christi, which just means the body of Christ. So corpus is the body. Uh, tempus temporis, genus generis. We have the men endings, nomen nominis, carmen carminis. And uh, at the bottom there, you, you might see an E ending, al, ar, and there are many more, uh, mare, maris, animal, animalis, and so on. Uh, so like I said, the third declension is really big. I didn't put it all into this one slideshow. Um, I just wanted to introduce some of the basic parts. All right, so uh, nouns and adjectives uh, must match only in gender, case, and number. Uh, they do not have to look the same, and this is where most people, I think, run into trouble. It's very easy, or relatively easy, to look at these and see that they are of the same gender, case, and number. 
Mala Puella, the evil girl or the bad girl? Well, they both end in a. They are both singular. They're both feminine. Uh, and they're both nominative. Malai puelai. Again, they are feminine. They're nominative. This time they're plural. And the endings are the same. They have that same Lego piece at the end. Pulcra femina. Well, exactly the same thing as the, the example we just saw. Pulcra feminae. Okay, gender, case, and number match up. And they look the same. Parum bellum, uh, which just means... Um, it's a small war. I don't know. It's a small war after all. And parui belli um, is the plural of that. And there we're looking at the second declension, neuter. Um, but again, the endings match up. It's really nice. I wish all words in Latin and Greek did this. Unfortunately, however, that doesn't happen. So if we take a word like malus, well, malus is the masculine version of the word mala. So malus is nominative, singular, and masculine, bad or evil. And rex, rex is a third declension, nominative, singular, masculine noun. So malus, rex, they are both, they're the same in gender, case, and number, but they don't look the same. And then if we look at the plural, mali regis, again, we've, dis, we've um, declined malus in its own second declension, usi o um o i orumisosi. So that mali means bad, evil, masculine things. And regis is the, um, the analog of this. It's in the third declension. It's also nominative, it is masculine, it's plural, but because these come from different declensions, their endings are going to be a little bit different. If we look down at the next one, novum nomen and novi nominis, the endings don't match up, but they do match up in gender, case, and number. And it takes a long time, I think, for this to sink in. Uh, sometimes the Lessons that I see in books are a little disappointing in that they don't do a lot to reinforce it. They introduce it, and it's really up to your magister or magistra to uh, do the necessary repetition and reinforcement. And then at the bottom, vera pax, um, we again have words that are the same in gender, case, and number, but they come from different declensions and thus have different endings. So this is something to be uh, very careful with. In the early Latin lessons that you've had, uh, with the first and second declension, many things matched up nicely, um, and books don't really bring out the difference. Now, however, it's unavoidable. Um, so this is going to be very important uh, for you to get used to, especially as we go on to the other declensions, which, as I said, the fourth and fifth have no adjectives of their own. So that's it for this little introductory slideshow on the third declension. There is a song that will help you memorize the endings. I'll up upload that later. And uh, voilà.